All right, what's up, y'all? This is the It's Only Basketball Podcast, where we only talk basketball. This is your host, Love of the G, and Smooth Chico T. What's up, my brother? Introduce yourself. What's happening? My name is Smooth Chico T. Real name is Tion. I play basketball. I'm looking to do a professional. Let's go ahead and talk about this stuff we got to talk about today. And I definitely want to get to that Maverick series because that was crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So... Some of our topics we got, we talking about the game sevens that just occurred uh, that you seen yesterday, the Mav series, the the Nuggets series, the, the Celtics series, though we probably had skipped through that because they cooked up. And then uh, what's it called? The Knicks series, Knicks and Pacers. We based in Indianapolis, so that was one of the biggest series for us. Um, we're also going to talk about the eliminated team, see what they can do, how they can improve their rosters. And then we also got uh, an event coming up um, for ourselves. We work together at CBG, and we got an upcoming event with Always Ways in this organization. This is for you, right? Now, before we get to all that, I introduce our sponsors for today. We have EPN Supplements first. If you're looking for a product that can help you with your gains, that can help you stay healthy, or can help you shred fat while sleeping, go to EPN Supplements. It's natural, organic. It focuses on a holistic approach, and they do not overcharge you. You will have to pay for a membership, but the membership is about $19, and then you can get food for free. If you use the code Omavi Banks or O-Banks, you'll be able to get a discount on your purchase. Also, our second sponsor is Grip Spritz. If you're looking to have grip on any court that you play on at any time, whether it's outside, inside, old court, new court, overseas, Back here in the States, doesn't matter. Grip Spritz is your go-to. They already work with some TBL teams and professional teams, and they also go perfect for this upcoming AAU season. So you kids out there looking for a good product that can help you have grip early in the morning, that should go to. All right, so first, let's talk about the Game 7s. Tion, take it over. Man, it was... I would say if we're starting with the Dallas series, it was the most unpredictable game seven that I've seen in a long time because I feel like going into that matchup, you know, the young Thunder, you know, they got the number one record in the West. That's not easy to do, especially with them being young. Chad Holgram being his first year in the league, you know, that's a lot of pressure on him just to match up with people that's been in the league for a long time, like Daniel Gafford and PJ Washington on the other side of the ball. So just my first initial take on it, then we'll get yours. My first initial take, I'm going to be honest, I had OKC winning. I had OKC taking game seven and going on about their business. But I guess Shea just had to foul him on the three. Um, like he had to, he jumped early, got caught in the air, rookie move, you know, tried to reposition himself to get the block on PJ, ended up fouling him. That, that cost the series. That, yeah, One mistake. I, yeah, I, I would say – that um, as far as that Mav Mav series, um, I was more so impressed by the defense Kyrie was doing. Now, granted, I didn't watch a lot of Mavs games during the season, but from the games I did watch, I could see him taking a more defensive approach uh, to the roster. And I guess you know, the series the season's always up and down, but I wasn't surprised when um when you started seeing Kyrie playing defense within this series, taking a more defensive role, um, that he started actually being very effective. Uh, but more so, I was impressed with the fact that P.J. Washington was able to be their X factor because when they traded for him, I wasn't expecting – because from what I saw from him when he was playing in – he was playing in Charlotte. Um, I want to say he was somewhere else first, but – No, it was um, Charlotte. He was in Charlotte that whole time. Yeah. Yeah, so I knew that he was a stretch four, right? And he kind of gave me uh, what was it uh, Marvin Williams? And I don't know if you remember him, but number two. Had, <laughs> yeah, when he was playing playing for the Hawks, he kind of yeah. his game kind of reminded me of a bro, you know, being a a cool professional. But to see him go out there and he put up, because I think they won both games with him putting up. 27 and 29 respectively and then he came back in game five i believe and he was a leading scorer for the mavs they didn't win that game but i'm saying um his contributions and then he hit the 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 free throws to win the game so and with luca not being 100 percent, but i i believe that the mavericks could win that series though 
Although I didn't, I didn't care for either matchup. I just thought, you know, how was I was focused on how OKC would play since they're young. Cause I knew that would be their disadvantage, but I didn't think mm-hmm. the Mavericks role players. Cause I, if you pay, if you remember when the Mavericks made their conference finals run in 2022, their role players were very inconsistent. If they were at home, they were cooking. When they was away, they couldn't hit the side of a barn. So we're looking at that and I'm looking at, okay, OKC is one of the best home crowds. I thought they wouldn't, they weren't going to be able to perform to the level that um, they needed to for them to pull out the series. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, what do you think OKC needs to address for their roster? Because, you know, 4-2 as the one seed, kind of crazy in my opinion. Well, there it depends on what type of one seed they are. I see this roster has been together for like two or three seasons. This is really the first time this roster's – well, if you're adding Chet Holgram, you're adding Jalen Williams. Well, I mean, Jalen has been on the roster for, you know, two or three years now. But I feel like going forward, if they need to address anything, they got the picks to do it. <laughs> They definitely got all the picks from that uh, Clippers uh, OKC trade that happened with Paul George. So they need to address anything. They can definitely get it handled. So what I think they need to address, um, definitely getting moving Chet to like the four and then getting a real deal center because Chet being the stretch five, but then he's also got to guard people like Embiid, guard people like Wimby. And then still have to produce an offensive I mean, game too. I think he can guard Wimby though. I think he can guard Wimby. I'm not saying he can't can or can't guard anybody. I'm just saying that's gonna be tough on him early in his career to not be to not have a a veteran center next to him that says, Hey, when they do this, do that. You nah, know. I, nah, I kinda can see that. It's just like they need a another big body. Yeah. Um, but I think as far as for the way that they play you got to run Chet at the five, especially the way the game is now. Because when you think of Daniel Gafford, Daniel Gafford is really a four, um, not because of what his game say, but because of what his size say. Uh, pause. He's um, <laughs> but he's he's um six nine, six ten. You know what I'm saying. So if I'm not mistaken, yeah, he's like, so I mean, he could jump and stuff, but. 6'9 is a power forward size, technically, and you're about two inches away from being a small forward. So it's like, I mean, it wasn't, they weren't too physically imposing, but they were just strong enough. So to mitigate that, most teams you'll have, you need just need another guy that's like. Um, a bruiser. Yeah, you need a Charles Oakley. Like you need, how a, you need, a, Derek, you need Derek, a Oakley. Yeah. You need a yeah, Oakley. Like Charles. They banned him from the New York uh, arena too, Madison Square Garden. <laughs> why they do? Why they do that? Why they oh, do you didn't see it? Nah, so just quick sidebar. He got into a fight with one of the fans in the crowd, and the security came over. And you know, in how New York, get... oh yeah, in New York, he's he got he's banned for life. For life, oh yeah, banned. No, they not go ban no Oakley. It's a it's an old story, but like I just thought it was funny they banned one of their legends. <laughs> Well, oh, nah, because he was just at the game in New York. Yeah, he was just, uh, you know what I'm saying, just watching and got into a fight. Yeah. Uh, but, like, I'm saying they need a they need a Oakley or Anthony Mason. I'm throwing out old names. I'm trying to think of a, a modern name, but, like. Derek Pat, Lively. Derek Lively was abusing them. But he's seven foot. You I'm just saying like somebody that can be seven a closer, though. Somebody like yeah, but like he just, just needs somebody to learn from. I'm not saying that person needs to be a pivotal part of their roster. Somebody like Javale McGee can come in and be like, "Hey, Chet, this is what it is." Nah, this you gotta give day. you gotta give Javale minutes because I'm saying I'm saying like it don't gotta be a center. Like I'm I'm naming names of guys that's like six eight, six seven, six nine that um can be bruisers without. You can you can run them at the four without moving Chet to the four, because if you get a five, because the, the the main reason for their success is because of course that young team in the running like they're doing what Sacramento did when they was when they had Buddy Hill and Iman Shumper when they was the scores like when it was like the scores is it you been to a scores game yet etc right I think that was like 2020, 2021, something like that maybe twenty nineteen but they went forty one right. and forty one. 
And the main thing they were doing was just pushing the pace, pushing the tempo. Like, and I like the Pacers, but like you had Buddy Hill though. He was like lacing them mugs. He was averaging like twenty that season. Mm-hmm. It's more so like in order for them to play their style the way that they do to utilize their speed. You have to put Chet at the five. If you put a, a actual five in there, it's gonna slow them down. It's gonna slow it down. Yeah, and Claw, because your best player um, is Shea, and he drives the ball a lot. That's he's dry. Even though he's not getting all the way into the paint, he's getting paint touches around fourteen feet, thirteen feet, fifteen feet, um, and then slightly outside the paint, sixteen feet. His game is predicated on him going downhill and utilizing quick stops, breaks, pump fakes, post fades. So he occupying the real estate. He's occupying the mid post, occupying the low block, op- occupying the elbow at times, depending on where you get him the ball at. So in order to maintain that level of spacing, you have to have Chet at the five. You move Chet to the four. I, I don't remember... Like I said, I watched Chet Holmgren, but him at a five, he's a good enough cover on switches. Him at the four, the way he guards, I don't believe he's a good enough cover on switches. Now, it could work because Cleveland did it before. They ran Jared, Laurie, and Evan, Evan Mobley. Mobley. And they was and, and really, what was it? Before that, it was Andre Drummond. It was Andre Drummond, uh, uh, marking in, and then and Tristan Thompson. I don't know if they had him at the same time. But I'm saying like they ran them together in the starting lineup and they were abusing like Laurie at the three was crazy because he was able to move. He run the, I think he runs the three now, three or the four. And it's kind of um like you can't do like how do you match up? You know what I'm saying? Like that's a lot of length on the court. You know what I'm saying? So I think it's um it's possible. Like there's blueprints for how that can succeed. But I think Chet at the five is most likely their best option. Like how Anthony Davis is at the five. You know what I'm saying. I feel like if but, they get um, like a, John- a Jonathan Isaac from the from the Magic or something like that, I think they'll be they'll be fine. Jonathan, yeah, yeah. See now you're talking my language. That's what I'm saying. They get like, Jonathan Isaac. I think that'd be good. <laughs> a Mo Bamba. <laughs> a Mo Bamba. A Bo Bo. Sixers. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's that. That's actually. Cause, cause, um, sidebar. If you look at that Magic series and just in general this season, Jonathan Isaac looked like really good on the defensive side of the ball. Um, so if you can add, you add that to OKC, you you potentially walk out of this series like what a dub. Because if you got two, because that's what Cleveland's doing. They're running two seven footers basically. And, okay, and transition into that, um, you want to transition into that uh, Cleveland Cavalier Boston Celtics series? Right, go ahead, yeah. We just talking. I'm about yeah. to say, yeah. A um, little sidebar before I get into that. When they beat Orlando, I felt like they beat them, but it was it was very shaky. Like offense didn't look fluid. Ball wasn't popping around how it usually looks. They didn't get a lot of live plays and dunks. Granted, Jared Allen did get hurt with a rib injury or something like that. I think Franz Wagner, his strong ass forearm, kind of <laughs> broke broke his probably rib. Did it. So. He probably did it on purpose. Nah, it wasn't even on purpose. It was just a regular, you know, somebody's cutting through the basket and they trying to run a play. He was just mm-hmm. checking the cutter. That's all he was doing. Just checked the cutter and then looked away. He didn't even look at Jared. He just checked the cutter and broke his rib. That means it was already on ten for it to break that easily or get bruised. And once they lost Jared and they had to put Tristan Thompson in, they had to have Evan Mobley in, they looked awkward as hell. Darius Gardner was just up here, down here, Isaac Okoro. I just – it wasn't just – it. you can't rely on Donovan to drop 50 every every goddamn game. But I mean, it's – I got like a lot of film of Donovan Mitchell, right? And the problem with – Donovan Mitchell being put on the roster, though, I, I believe they should keep him, sign him to the extension because he's in, like, the prime. He's 27 years in his prime. He was averaging 28 uh, last season. Now he's averaging – he would have been averaging 28 to 30 again had he not got hurt midseason and tried to play through it so that he could get to the second seed or the seed that they got. Um, 
But the issue with Darius Garland, like that issue has been going on since Donovan Mitchell's been there. Like when Donovan Mitchell isn't in the game, Darius Garland going to go off. I think uh, as soon as Donovan Mitchell was ruled out for game, what was it, three in the game four, he put up 30. See what I'm saying? But the reason why they got Donovan Mitchell was because when you have just Darius Garland, you see it in Atlanta. Um, when you just have Darius Garland, because he's like smaller, he's like, uh, he relies on his shiftiness and quickness, his floater, like he's not physically opposing. So you put a bigger athlete on him the whole game, it's going to muck up the offense. And since he's the only one creating his own shot outside of Karis LeVert, Karis LeVert can't run an offense for you. Garland can, but he has to do that the whole time in order for you to stay afloat. That's not going to work. So I'm saying, so they got Donovan Mitchell to kind of remedy that. But what ended up happening is that Donovan Mitchell also doesn't play off the basketball. If you watch him in Utah, even though he was uh, the considered the two, right? He plays off ball sometimes like, Mike Conley became the two when Mike was there because Donovan always has the ball. And they got Mike Conley and Ricky Rubio in Utah to help mitigate Donovan always having to initiate the offense when I think they they lost to the Rockets. And I think when they lost – no, no, Mike, Mike was there when they lost to the Nuggets. But, yeah, like having Ricky Rubio and Mike Conley there was supposed to mitigate him always having the ball. But he's just like a ball-dominant player who shoots tough shots. He do, and he doesn't use he doesn't use his size either. Like even though he's six one, he's a big guard. You know what I'm saying? Like he's like mm-hmm. he looks really big. You know what I'm saying? Pause. Like, all right, bro, chill. Chill with the pause. I'm, bro, chill with the pause. Chill with the pause, bro. Chill with the pause. Why'd you put more emphasis on it? I heard you the first time really big. But cause now I'm saying I'm saying. I'm saying like he's he's like I want to say he probably two th- he's 6'1", 230 with a 6'10 wingspan. And I don't see him utilizing the mid post. You see what I'm saying? I'm not, I don't see him doing post face rule. When he gets the ball to attack, it's always – I ain't going to say always, yeah. always, but it's always him getting the rock and he's breaking down his defender either off a of pick and roll or off of a high isolation. Or he's coming down and he's shooting a quick three or he's doing his um, snatch. You see what I'm saying? So that's why I think it kind of made it, it it prevented the growth of Garland because Garland can get you 22 to 23, right? But instead of seeing him blossom further, it kind of just holds him back because he's deferring to Donovan. I'm saying, but like, I can see that, yeah, yeah. But when it comes to that series with the Magic, I mean, the Magic was one of the best defensive teams this season, I think they were top five. And that's the reason why they were the fifth seed in the first place, because their offense wasn't very good because it's Paolo or Bus. You know what I'm saying? But they were – so they had the ability to switch it up. So it was like two top defenses going at it. Think like Pacers and Pistons. So once you got a certain threat, get to a certain threshold, I mean, even – but even last season, though, it was kind of similar. It's always – it's a, the reason why you have Donovan is because it's going to be Donovan or Bus. Like, when it gets tough, the lack of experience a lot of these Cavaliers guys have in the playoffs, it always turns into Donovan or Bust. And when you're Donovan Mitchell, it's like, am I going to play the same way I do in the regular season? Like, giving other guys a chance, playing passive, or when I'm seeing they they not looking confident, am I just going to start just trying to take over the whole game? And with him having the ball, it's like you are at his mercy when it comes to how he's going to decide what he does. You see what I'm saying? Because um, even with him dropping 50, they lost that game. You see what I'm saying? They yeah, did. Yeah, they lost that game with him putting up 50. Now, he was eating. They lost that game. You know what I'm saying? And it took a toll on his body because you see what happened in the Celtics series out after game three. And he put up 30 each game. I'm like, yeah, I'm trying to watch the series. I can't even watch it. No more. I think they showed a graphic of comparing it to AI. Like most amount of points scored in the first two playoff series or something like that, and of your he team? had the same amount of points. No, as as a player, just him, because he had to he, he had to drop so many points. He he scored more than um, Brunson. Hey, I don't know if he scored more than Brunson, but they showed a graphic of him showing the, scoring the same amount of points as AI. Ah, okay. 
Because, I mean, he, he's, their, he's their number one option. He's the alpha on that team. I'm saying everything goes through Donovan. And when so you now got, let's um, – I think we can talk about the uh, the future now. So that's like who's left in the bracket. So before we do that, we can uh, kind of gloss over the uh, Lakers-Denver series because, man, it was like – it felt like the whole world was watching that series. And, uh, you know, the fact that Denver got them out of there – for what the second year in a row, I was like, mm-hmm. "Wow, LeBron really is struggling with Denver." And I think it just came down to scheme. Like, uh, if Denver was running the same type of scheme where you try to double Jokic and they just bring Aaron Gordon on the dunker spot every time, they're they're not going to keep going away from it. If, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Now, when they got them out of there and they got eliminated by Minnesota, now I'll say this. Because I, I stand on what I say. I had Denver beating Minnesota. I was like, Minnesota ain't been in the playoffs in how many years? They ain't got no experience. Is that in the third? I thought it was going to kind of look like the Magic. Like the Magic are very good. They're top five defensively. They have size. But a lot of their inexperience with Jalen Suggs really showed. Like those turnovers and, and busted plays that could have been avoided. Like I'm like, with Cole Anthony as well, I'm like, yeah, that shows. I thought the same thing was going to happen with Minnesota. But they do have a veteran point guard, Mike Conley, who we was just talking about earlier. And they got Ant Man, they got Cat, Nas Reed really showed out. I think he got the six man of year award. So um, we're talking we're talking about that Denver series, uh with Denver and Minnesota. Yep, Denver and Minnesota. I had Denver winning that series only because they're the former champs and everything like that. So the fact that the Minnesota got them up out of there or beat them the game before by fifty, I was like I felt like every other game was a blowout whether it was by Denver or it was by Minnesota. One team was blowing each other out. That that series was so unpredictable. What you think about that? No, I, I think um, – I didn't have a pick for that series. I just wanted to see how, how it played out because I, I don't know what the – you know, the Nuggets study film. So if they say that uh, this, this team was built to beat them, all right. To me, it just looked like I evenly matched. But what I always, for me, what I always say, if you take out Murray, you win the game. No matter how you do it. If Murray is not there, Nuggets won't win. If you recall the two seasons Murray missed the playoffs, Denver got swept. Yeah, by uh, Golden State, I think. And Phoenix. They got swept to lose in the playoffs. They got swept. You know what I'm saying? And even then, Portland took them six. And 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 they ain't put up fifty five on their head. You know what I'm saying. So, oh, you talking about that year? Yeah. Yeah, both years they ended in the sweep. You know what I'm saying like they if they don't have Jamal Murray, like if they don't have Jamal Murray and Jamal Murray is a performer, they don't go nowhere. And what you notice, what's it called? What's it called? Um, what you notice from that series is like uh, when Jamal Murray performed, it was like clear as day. All right, Denver the better team. I'm saying, but when Jamal Murray wasn't, whether he's hurt or not, I'm saying, it's like, oh man, they getting smoked by 40. So that's why I was, to me, it was more so, will you take Jamal Murray out of the game plan? And have, because if you let Jokic cook, you can win the game. If you let Jokic cook for 47, 35, whatever, you'll win. The, uh, when Golden State beat him, he was frying Draymond Green. Torching him, but he had he lit, it's lit, it was literally the same roster as it is right now, just without Jamal Murray. And Jamal Murray, depending on the night, well, it's only good for, he good for twenty and six. You know what I'm saying, which is like solid. But if you're the three time MVP, I should be able to get a game out of you, game or two, because you seven foot, you pass wizard. So they say. You know what I'm saying so. And they say Rudy Gobert is a liability. So looking at that series is more so like I'm trying to just figure out who's gonna actually perform more so than I got. There were I had a favorite because I didn't have a favorite. Minnesota was good, you know. what I'm saying Denver was good. So let's see who's gonna want it more. And to me, it looked like Minnesota wanted it just a little more than than Denver. For sure, for sure. Yeah. And that's why I'm going right into the future, I definitely felt like Minnesota wanted it more. So Minnesota's matching up with who's their matchup uh, coming out the West Western Conference Finals. So it's Mavericks, Mavericks. and then the Celtics versus the uh, Pacers. So um, 
Um, talking about the Pacers, you know, let's get to our hometown. You know what I'm saying? We say the best for last. You feel me? You know what I'm saying? Everybody riding that that Pacer Nation right now. Everybody feeling it right now. They they wasn't sure at first. They're like, oh, y'all got the Bucks first round? Y'all ain't making it past the Bucks. Psych. Wrong number. You know what I'm saying? That's psych wrong number. <laughs> Gentlemen sweeping up. You know, when the Pacers played the Bucks, uh, once I figured out Giannis wasn't playing, I literally looked at my wall, looked back at the TV, and said, yeah, it's over. I said, because nah, Dame has had to do that before. I'm like, it's just Dame and nobody else. Or I disagree. I disagree. And I'm like, yeah. I'm like, if Bobby Porters can step up, if um, I was trolling and said, if if the Nassas can step up, if um, if uh, Pat Connington, I'm like, I'm looking, I'm looking up and down the roster. I'm like, they got some good players. I'm just Brooke Lopez. I'm like, but this is looking ugly. My like, Pacers got the best bench in the league, the best bench. In the league, and when Dame sits, it's it was it was it was looking over with. So once they got Milwaukee up out of there, and they moved on to um, the New York Knicks, um, what I thought about the Knicks was all right. Julius Randle isn't playing, but the Knicks have been hooping, right? They beat Philly, so I'm like, well, how is this going to pan out with Dante Divincenzo going off the way he did, especially the way he did in Indiana? So I'm just like. But we have Rick Carlisle. I feel like it really came down to coaching because Rick Carlisle, and if you want to take Rick Carlisle or Tom Thibodeau, Tom Thibodeau is known, you know, for D Rose, the state and the third, you know what I'm saying, making a great player. But Rick Carlisle, he'll get your team to where they need to be. Like, you know, when he was in Dallas, he'll get your team where they need to be. So I felt like from beginning of the season until now, they have looked like a complete unit with Tyrese Halliburton running the point. Like, all right, I ain't got it this night, you got it. I ain't got it this night, you got it. Or I got it this night. And it's just next man up mentality. You can just see it in the way they play, in the way they sub, in the way how the minutes are, are spread out. Like, um, basically, I feel like that series came down to coaching. And now they're about to play the Celtics, who I have the Celtics personally winning that. Even though I love my Pacers, I do have the Celtics personally winning that matchup. Yeah, I, 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 I hear what you're saying. I expected the Pacers to lose until Dame got hurt. Oh, until Dame had to sit out too? Yeah, until Dame got hurt. Pacers was losing. Don't care what nobody say. Pacers was losing that series until Dame got hurt. And even then, I felt like that just made it an even matchup. You see what I'm saying? Like, Pacers got Pascal, yeah, Halley. Yeah. Pacers got Pascal, Halley. Uh, uh, what's it called? Miles Turner. Miles Turner. Uh, who Lee Smith. Uh, I'm saying them hard. Yeah. TJ McConnell, he be cooking the ISOs, but TJ McConnell, you know, OB Toppin. Ooh. You know what I'm saying? I watched him while he was in New York. You know what I'm saying? Like, because D Rose, I think D Rose was, no, nah, not D Rose wasn't there. I was watching New York because Julius Randle. I, technically, I was a Julius Randle fan, fan until 2021. You know, he could. I think he signed a shoe deal with with Skechers. He did. Or am I tripping? He did. He oh did. my god, that was real. I don't know if he did or didn't. I don't care. I told you after twenty twenty one. I don't know if I was really walking with Randall like that because so I, I watched a decent amount of Knicks, especially when Brunson went there too. So Randall was there. Brunson went there. I watched Knicks. So I keep it short though. I watched the the the. Milwaukee Bucks series. I thought Milwaukee would win that series. Pacers win. Okay, cool. Mainly due to injuries. That's fine, though. You know, we go to the Knicks series. I'm thinking Knicks win, too. Knicks get hurt, right? I understand everybody has their own level of injuries, but it's literally, I'm not going to count Bogdanovich because he was hit or miss in a rotation, right? And I'm not going to count Julius Randle either. That doesn't matter. You know, they probably would have. I would have bet against them if Julius Randle played. Oh because, man, you definitely, <laughs> bro. I'm like, bro. I would have bet, bro. Randle, Randle stops the ball. Randle isos. He and it, it just burns my core. Like when he came into the league, I felt like he was Zach Randolph. You know what I'm saying, like, I feel like, especially 
he had a very strong fan. Like, I feel like he was a more athletic Zach Randolph. And I'm like, I'm feeling good about this. When he was 20 on the and 10. Yes, I thought he was going like 20 and 10 kind of guy. And then he turned into a 20 and 10 type of guy. But he don't. He not Zach Randolph. Zach Randolph put out San Antonio as an eight seed. And then Zach Randolph took his team to the conference finals in 2013. You know what I'm saying? Zach Randolph was busting Timmy tail. You was not checking him. And I look at, yeah. man, it was so crazy. I watched that Hawk series, and they completely shut down Randall. For context, Randall was average. This is his first, his breakout season after his first season in New York. Well, I was expecting him to break out then, but he's a black hole when he gets the ball. You know what I'm saying? That's why he had to leave. Um, the Pelicans, even though he was putting up like 21 and 11. He was a black hole. I you thought he there? left the Pelicans because of that whole Anthony Davis situation. Nah, bro, he a black hole. <laughs> He's a he, black he, hole. he is that. No, he is the that. ball When the ball gets to a hand, it dies in his hand. You know what I'm saying? And I'm like, he always. <laughs> yeah, bro. But he always had an ability to pass. He always had the ability to run a break. If you watched the L.A., because he was in L.A. when Kobe was there. The farewell tour and all that, and he got hurt. I'm like, okay. Then I watch his game. I'm like, yo, you got Clarkson, etc. Randall, whatever. I'm like, Randall got a lot of potential in my opinion. Athletic, he needs like super strong, and he's built super strong, bro. So why am I watching you trying to tween tween cross at the three point line at six nine, bro? It pisses me off because he can't go right. He cannot go right. Like. He can go right like he can dribble with his right hand. But he doesn't have any move going to that right side but a straight line drive. You know what I'm saying? And he has to come back left. And they just use that to their advantage. So when I look at, like, even last year, he underperformed in the playoffs. Again. You know what I'm saying? He always, he said he just gets shut down in the playoffs. And it, like, hurts the Knicks because he would shoot about, I think this year he shot 34% from three, but that year in 21, he shot 40% from three on five attempts, right? So this year, say he makes it there, we expecting you to perform, and I'm looking at you, you like, uh, 17 is all I got. You were averaging 25 and 10, bro. You were an all-NBA performer. So it was literally like last year, it was basically Brunson versus the Heat. You see what I'm saying? And it turned into Brunson versus the Sixers. Then Brunson versus the Pacers. But Brunson's hurt. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, they, the Knicks the Knicks series, man, was a wash. I expected New York to win. I wanted New York to win personally because Brunson was the starting point guard. Yeah, Brunson's he, been, been balling out in his yeah, mind. Yeah, and just to kind of yeah. piggyback off that, I think I started to notice that Randall was a was a black hole, what you call it, a ball hog. Nah, I ain't going to say a ball, ball hog, but winner. a black hole for sure. Black hole for sure. Yeah, I, ain't I think the he ball. had a game winner, and uh, he was like fumbling the ball. Jimmy Butler like poked it out of his hand like three or four times. It's like a whole nother. Uh, I think Duncan Duncan Robinson or um, Tyler Hero was coming over to rotate. Like you know when they show, they mm-hmm. was coming over to show. As soon as Jimmy Butler poked the ball, they had to come over and help. He got the ball back, wrestling with them, lost it again, threw it up on the three point line, threw it up. And went in, he hit the game winner. I'm like, I guess he think he liked that now. Boy, you almost boy, you almost <laughs> sold the game. <laughs> almost cost him the game. Yeah, he did. And you know who else picked up that bad habit? Who's in Toronto now? Quickly? Nah. The other lefty. Barrett. He always played Barrett. like he always played like that. He always played like that. Came in. He and always Zion came in, bro. Bro. He always played like that. R.J. Barrett, that's what I said. I watched New York games for real because they had – I watched them because they had Derrick Rose the first stint. Then I watched them again because they had Derrick Rose in the second stint. But I was also watching them because Tom Thibodeau, the coach. So I'm a – I was a Bulls fan growing up because my father made me be a Bulls fan. But I actually really enjoyed those times. And so when I saw that Tom Thibodeau was the coach, I'm like, bet that. You know what I'm saying? Because uh, I was a fan of Minnesota while Jimmy was there because Bulls and Tom Thibodeau was the coach. I'm like, yep, Minnesota going to the playoffs. When Tom Thibodeau got hired into New York, I'm like, yep, 
New York's going to the playoffs. And I'm expecting Julius Randle to perform so it doesn't have to be Derrick Rose versus the Hawks. Pissed me off. So I was upset highly as uh, Julius Randle because Derrick Rose ended up getting hurt in that series because he was – Tom Thibodeau basically was like, take us to the promised land, Derrick Rose. I'm like, he's 32. <laughs> what are you doing? He has knee problems. It's about to – and sure enough, I'm like, oh, he came out, I think, game four in the second half. He was hooping, but then – he started struggling out of nowhere for no reason. I'm like, something wrong. And then it came out, he was hurt. So, and he barely got to play game five because he was hurt. So, yeah. with that, with that though, I think for the Pacers, um, congratulations to their success. What they might have to do with Boston is that they got to play, I'm going to outscore you. you know what I'm saying they got to play the I'm going to outscore you game. You got to attack Kristaps Porzingis, number one. Every early and often, because mm-hmm. when you make when you make Chris Stapps unplayable, it kind of mucks up the way they have to play. Um, number two, you have to get Drew Holiday off of Halliburton. So I'm gonna put say you put Drew Holiday in as many screen actions as possible. Start TJ. You can start TJ McConnell or give TJ McConnell and Tyrese Halliburton a lot of minutes. That way, you can put Holly off ball. You know what I'm saying and he can weaponize his jumper and um, his gravity. And TJ McConnell could get him the ball um, as well. So I'm saying, without because because again, defensively, Indiana has never been has not been good. You know what I'm saying, and it's really been looking like Pascal is their best player as well in these series. Because uh, I ain't gonna say a lot of the games, but when I was seeing in that that Buck series and within the previous series that we just witnessed, Pascal remained consistent. And I'm not really a Pascal fan because you know what he's gonna do when he get the ball. He's spinning. <laughs> At some point in time, he's spinning. It don't matter what he's doing; he's going to spin. He's gonna spin. <laughs> he's spinning, bro. So it don't matter, like whatever it is, bro. You know the spin coming. But I respect his game. I respect his defense. That man could be inbounding the ball. He's gonna spin. He's spinning, bro. He's spinning. <laughs> and, you, and you can see it from a mile away. You can see it from as soon as he get that ball in the low post, mid post. He's putting it down right. All right, because I, left I, I, didn't, I didn't really watch a lot of uh, Siakam. I did kind of did do some, once Indiana got him. I was like, oh, he was a two time All Star. Forgot about that. But when uh, all NBA Rico performer Hines, as well, yeah, all NBA, all NBA performer, NBA as, well. performer as well. I was like, okay, Siakam. But then I watched the Rico Hines runs, like because uh, it would just came up in my suggestion. I'm like, man, is this man Siakam going? He going to shoot a mid range every time. Every time, bro. He he's gonna spinning. spin and shoot a mid range every he's time. He's spinning. He's spinning. There's no hey boy. We know you're not passing it. <laughs> no, it go, the ball goes there to die. I'm trying to tell you, these guys, man. These guys. I thought Pascal was a good pickup, and he could kind of stretch the floor. But bro, he's spinning. I like that he has size though. He can definitely um stretch the floor out. I mean, not on a three because you know it's hit or miss. It's fifty fifty with him, but. I do feel like the um, Pacers do have to go at Chris Stapps for singles for sure. Chris Stapps cannot guard, bro. He's going to shoot a three, and he's going to maybe play some defense, but he's not running oh, the floor. Oh, 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 hold on now. I'm not taking Say Chris Stapps slander. I'm not taking Chris Stapps slander. Chris Stapps. Talking about he ain't going to do nothing. He hold just on. had so many injuries in the past couple of years. That man is not what he used to be when he was in New York. I know you're not he can right. shoot that thing, though. Did you, you not see like, oh, him? Did you not pay attention when he was in Washington? He had one of his best seasons. He's coming he off in of Washington, that. yes. You, did I'm you pay attention? Though. He had I'm one of his best though. defensive seasons, and he carried that into this year as well. Like I ain't did man. I'm not thinking. Well, much, you, well, Miles led the league in blocks before, but you said the Pacers don't got no damn defense. So it's it's, it's kind of like, what do you? What is your individual thing? Like, I'm I'm basing it off who they're matching up against right now and what right. the Pacers should do. I you don't want to go at Jason Tatum. You're not going to go at Jalen Brown. You're not yes, going to go at Drew are. Holiday. You are going to go at Jason Tatum. You're going to make Jason Tatum guard, even though he's just going to run you into Chris Stapps. Yes, I'm going to make Tatum guard. What? I'm making everybody guard. That's the point. You got to outscore them. We running you out the gym. As soon as you miss or whatever... Like, bro, and the way to start that is to go at Chris Stapps, bro. Get the switch and see what he's talking about. If I'm he's talking you, about something, next in line. If I'm saying you would go at Tatum, 
because you have Pascal. You know what I'm saying? Tatum going to be guard and Pascal. They both play the four. And Pascal is one of your best offensive options, if not your best scoring offensive option. You So you're going to attack Tatum. In fact, you want him to attack Tatum because the ball, when Tatum, because like I'm saying, these guys, when these guys get the ball, they go to die. When Tatum gets the ball, it goes to die. You want to know why he's shooting these poor percentages? It's because he breaks the offense every time he touches it when he's trying to score. You know he's going to score because he's, he's tween cross, tween cross, tween cross. Yeah, that's it. Everybody run back. Ain't no pass coming. Everybody run back. Like, bro, he's tween cross and tween cross, tween cross, tween cross. Bro, Look why at you him. say it is so funny, bro? <laughs> no, I'm just saying, bro, that's it. I'm not saying like that's all to his game, but when you watch it. I know, I like, know, I know. Like, cause he see this the problem. This That's the problem. Serious. This is the problem, bro. He's looking like so he was he what when he was training with Kobe, hanging with Kobe, he had Kobe itis. Where he gets the ball, he triple threat, he swing it. Look at you. You know, he jab step. He yeah, he has he, you know what I mean, pull up J long two. You know, he misses. Okay, whatever. Miss or hit, you know, one of the two. All right. He paid he spent a lot of time with Paul Pierce in the offseason, and they still been so the influence, in my opinion, is showing because I watched film on the 08 Celtics playoff run, and when Paul Pierce get the ball, it goes there to die. It looks so out of place. The Celtics might be a hot take, but the Celtics ain't win because Paul Pierce. They won because of KG in the front court. Like their front court, literally, if the offense broke down outside of – Paul Pierce one four flats, which looked hard to watch, bro. They're picking, popping you to death, picking, pop or picking and roll. And if they miss the roll, they getting the rebound and just doing a putback, bro. They had Glenn Davis, they had KG, Rondo. they had Leon Poe, uh, they had PJ Brown. You know what I'm saying? And then you could consider Paul Pierce because he's a front court player. You know what I'm saying? But that front court carried that playoff run, bro. I'm telling you, it carried because every single player. Oh, and they had Kendrick Perkins. Can't forget Rondo. KP. Yeah, I'm just saying they front like they front court. They, these are six front court players, and at least five of them can pick a pop. So when you got like you said, Rondo, you feel me? He can he can dish that. Yeah, it's literally they're just killing them from the mid range, bro. Just killing them, killing them, like pick and pop, bro. And then the offensive flow smooth, pass, pass. You know what I'm saying? It gets a Paul Pierce, hang tween, hang tween, step back on the elbow. You don't know if he's hitting or missing. Like, bro, I'm saying, bro, I'm telling you. And when you watch Jason Tatum, right, everybody else is performing, but you see him shooting these horrible percentages, right? They did go against, um, who was the, who was the AFC this year? Uh, Miami. That's a really good defense. And then they went against Cleveland, which is also a really good defense. But why are you the only one struggling against these defenses? And my assumption and observation is that he I, I, he opts for difficult. He chooses to score in the most difficult way. You know what I'm saying? Instead of going the easiest path to get in your baskets, he scores in the most difficult way, which is literally he's iso- like he would ISO at the top of the key. He would ISO at the wing with the defense being set. Get the like, defense set. Yeah, man, the defense is set. It, the defense is set. Like he does do that. He, he's ice. He's literally ice when you look at you dead in your eyes, knowing he about to step back, and you know he about to step back. Like you, yeah, everybody know I'm tween tweening you to step back on you. Whether I do a side step going to my right or a side step going to my left, I'm shooting that. And if you're lucky, I'm gonna shoot a post fade and look like Siakam. But look. You know, I seen a meme. They said this is gonna be the two ugliest jumpers that going head to head at it. They was making fun of Jason's, you know, hip thrust jumper. And then they was making ah. fun of Tyrese's uh bird yeah. call jumper. <laughs> they did I don't this know what that him. is. I don't know what that is. He said he. I, they had an interview with Tyrese. They said he used to just form shoot all the time. You know, you standing right right at the rim, you just form shoot like this. So when he got into his regular shot, he would be on the three point line set the ball like this, and then it's all arms from there <laughs> because he just did so many form shots. I'm just saying, bro. But basically, you're saying you have Celtics winning that series too? I do have the Celtics winning that series, but I believe the Pacers can win. I don't think it'll be a smoke session. 
No, nah, I don't um, think it's gonna be a smoke session. I got the Celtics winning. And I think, and I, think and I think Pacers if they play their cards right, if they go in there, like I just want to know, like what is gonna be their motive of um, success? What are they gonna hang their hat on? Right? If you're hanging your hat on offense like you did most of the season, then you need to stay consistent in that way and push the pace because if you get held to under 100 points like you got held against New York and I think Milwaukee too, you're not winning that game. There's no way you're winning that game. And, and I'm not saying Obi Toppin bad, but I think you – like. I'm not saying Pascal's bad. I'm saying I think you might benefit from putting in the Obi Toppin. Obi Toppin fits that beautifully. I didn't like him in the Knicks, but for Obi Toppin – his role right here in Indy, you could potentially start him because I'm not I'm not 100 on how good his defense is, but you could start Obi Toppin. You know what I'm saying and that gives you another. Lob I feel like his handles got to get better with Obi Toppin. I feel like when he's he gets a lob threat. Yeah, he's just a lob threat. He's not he's really doing that much. But Miles Turner, shoot, he's stretching the floor. Yeah, you know what I'm saying so. I'm not expecting Obi Toppin to just straight up shoot jumpers. But like you know how Gary Payton for for the Golden State Warriors play, I think Obi Toppin to do that similar role. Cause I can't even tell you who's their small forward. I don't know who their small forward is. Who is their small forward? It's uh Jackson to do with the dreads. You know what I'm saying? You playing who is it? Tyrese and then Nimhard and Jackson? Yeah. Right, you got two guys, it's like who? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Who? Yeah, yeah, he's who? Who? And then and then you don't even have Benedict Mathurin. Yeah, he's hurt. You know what I'm saying? Like so I my like my thing would be because you have so much talent, right? I don't know if it'll deplete your um bench, but you gotta run McConnell. Like, you gotta run heavy minutes with McConnell and Obi in the game. Because Obi's going to give you rim pressure, and McConnell can break down the defense and give you rim pressure as well, which then allows Tyrese Halliburton the spacing and opportunity to um, play. Because if I make it so that I'm struggling to guard a Pascal or a McConnell, right, I'm not going to put – I may end up moving my best defender from Halley and putting them on, say, Pascal or McConnell. You know what I'm saying? So – the only thing then would be McConnell's stamina because he only played 18 minutes, average 18 minutes this season and was still putting up 10 points. If you really, really, this is the battle of the backup white boy PGs. <laughs> Peyton Pritchard and CJ McConnell. <laughs> Bro, I can't tell you the difference between the two of them. <laughs> I can't tell you the difference. One's older. <laughs> nah, man, I can't tell you the difference. I will say I think TJ probably better. Yeah, um, Peyton Pritchard, he's not. He's He, uh, he just got on, here, man. you know. No, he didn't. I'm not saying Peyton Pritchard. He's not 26. Good, he's not as experienced as TJ, though. He's 26. He's not as experienced as TJ. He's not as experienced. He's blank. 26. TJ McConnell is not 26. I'm talking about Pritchard. And I'm saying Pritchard is not as old as McConnell. So bro, McConnell has more experience. Five year different. I agree. I'm saying, bro. Okay. I'm saying, bro, like they're playing the backup role. And they're almost like the same player. You know what I'm saying? They are and they the same do similar. Player, That's funny, though. That's, That's funny. my point. That's my point. Like, it's like, bro, you look at the numbers. That's funny. You look at their play style. I think McConnell plays uh, better defense than Pritchard, though. But Oh, yeah. Them inbound steals and killing yeah, teams. Yeah, I, I, I think McConnell plays better defense than Pritchard. But I'm saying it's like, bro, I'm looking at the same thing. 10, 3, and 3. McConnell is 10, 5, and 3. I guess the same – I'm getting the battle of the back of the white boys. Who's going to Who's going to dominate? Who's going to step gonna up? Dominate? I think a lot of that might be the difference in the series, too. You know I'm saying? How the benches is going to perform. Yeah, because if I – that's the thing. You got to you gotta tire out Boston. You know what I'm saying? So, and then it caused them to make costly mistakes because you're used to playing that up-tempo style. And my point is, right, if I'm going to attack you using that up-tempo style, I'm putting in McConnell and Obi for heavy minutes because McConnell is the short, quick, and shifty guard that's going to run. Halliburton, you already know what he do. Obi Toppin gives you that lob threat, and Obi Toppin is not really a four. He's a three, but they put him at the four because he can't handle the rock. You put him at the three-ish because he's really going to be running a four out there with Pascal and 
Miles Turner because the way that Miles and Pascal operate, they operate like perimeter players. Miles is staying at the three point line. He's not going in there. He only mm-hmm. averages like seven to eight rebounds, maybe nine. I give him nine, but he really only averages seven rebounds. Pascal only averages about seven to eight, seven to nine, nope, seven to eight rebounds. You know what I'm saying, and Pascal is really a three because it was say he was six eleven initially, but when they redid heights, that man is only six eight, six nine, bro. He's a three. You know what I'm saying like. So Obi Toppin will be able to occupy that pick him. He can occupy the dunker spot, essentially, because Miles is going to be at the three-point line. Pascal will be somewhere between the mid-post or the three-point line. Hopefully he isn't. Mm-hmm. So Obi Toppin can be on the uh, dunker spot, catching lobs, um, primary uh, on-ball screener for the pick and roll to get the lob. And he can also get the backdoor 45 cut if he's in the game. So... For for Boston though, um, you just need better games out of Jason Tatum. You got to get him to buy into the system and get easier looks, because it's looking mm-hmm. like how many series are you gonna get from Derek White? Derek White, where he just frying boys. I mean, yeah, he's been on a tear, but like, he averaging like yeah. folks talking about Derek White or Jalen Brown, who's the second best player on the South Six. When really, it's like. It's Jason Tatum, the third, fourth best player, <laughs> because he ain't hooping. You can see the percentages, bro. You can look at the numbers, bro. He not hooping. He not. Hooping. Man, definitely got locked up when they played Miami. And I was surprised that Miami won that game on the road. No Jimmy Butler. I said, "Wow." Historic shooting night. I said, "Wow." <laughs> that made me right there. It was like, okay. This is gonna. This playoffs is gonna be so unpredictable. That's why this Mavericks Minnesota series. I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna stick with. I'm gonna stick with. If I had to choose a team to win that series, I'm sticking with. Ooh, this is tough. Who you picking? The Mavs. Mavs versus Minnesota. Who you Mavs got? versus Minnesota. Uh, who am I picking? I don't know. I I want to root for the Mavs and Minnesota. So I don't know if I got a pick, but um, I'll go Mavs for Kyrie, bro. I'll go Mavs for Kyrie. I don't want. I don't necessarily want Luca to have a ring, but for Kyrie, bro. But see, Mike Conley. I also like my, watching Mike Conley. So I don't know. I don't have as many hours of film of Mike Conley like I do Kyrie. Like, bro, you can find so many, bro. But I like Mike Conley too. So. And he's from here. You know what I'm saying? He's from Indianapolis. So I I I I'm still going Mavs, but I, I would want to see Minnesota win too. I think I'm going Mavs because they've been to Western Conference Finals before when they had to play the Warriors. And uh I feel like they're coming back with a with a vengeance. They're coming back with a different uh look team. Um I feel like, yeah, that'll that'll go great. Um Jason Kidd, he knows what to do. Like, the schemes he's been putting together is really just going to come down to defense. Like, they're going to put up big scoring numbers, like, on each side of the ball. Like, Cat, Nas, Ant-Man, Jaden McDaniels hitting his corner threes, you know, stuff like that. Um, You know, on the other side of the ball, you know, you obviously got Luka, Kyrie. Like you said, Kyrie's been taking a more of a defensive role. Mm-hmm. So, he hasn't been really putting out that scoring output that he can because he's like, all right, the team needs something different from me. And if it we're winning games, let's keep doing that. Because I noticed he, I think he only had like four points in that whole third quarter or something like that because he was just going with the flow of the game. He's Am like, I, I don't, yeah. Mm-hmm. He's like, I don't need to break the offense to go, to go say I had 27 and we fucking lose. He's like, you know what? We need something different. I done been on this road before. I'm a vet. So, you know, Luca, Kyrie, Daniel Gafford, P.J. Washington, if he keeps hitting his shots. Um, a dark horse you might see come out, maybe Maxi Kleber, if they if they need space Mavs, before that. Yeah, Maxie, if they need space Maxie. before that much. Yeah. The, that rotation um, didn't do well in the season. Yeah. That rotation, when they would run Maxi at the five, that, that didn't do well. That was terrible. Um, I get the premise um, because – just as you have a pick and pop threat, you have a um, a lob threat, but 
that's why they went to go get P.J. Washington. So you could play Gafford or Lively and Washington at the same time. So Lugan can have his pick and pop threat and P.J. And then and Derrick Jones Jr. can be threat. in the dunker spot. And he's also a live threat. See what I'm saying? And, and he shoots the three. Yeah. Well, he's been hitting. Yeah. I don't know if he's yeah. been doing a while on Derrick Jones Jr. to shoot. I'm There's saying, a reason why they was leaving him open. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Derrick Jones Jr. <sighs> Catch a body. That's all you need to do. He's playing the Gary Payton role for – um. I like the, the Gary Payton role. But he's playing the Gary Payton role. Except for he's bigger. The GP, literally all he did was – Get in the game, except for he didn't start. Start, but he would get in the game. He would hound the ball handler, get deflections, get steals, and then he would be he's six two, but he set a pick. They catch a lob. You seen the craziest dunks out of GP, the second for real. So, so um, but yeah, transitioning though, so we can close out. You know, we have a nice discussion. Let's talk about basketball. I love talking about basketball. But uh, we got our upcoming events. I'm saying, could you tell the audience exactly what I'm speaking on about these upcoming events, my brother? So the next upcoming event that we got for CBG, Love with a G, is our Always Ways event. So we're playing Always Ways for his foundation. This is for you, his nonprofit foundation. Go check him out. He posts on Instagram, posts on YouTube. Everything you um TikTok, all that. So um we're gonna play him in this event. Um do we have the venue worked out? You know which venue we're gonna um, end up going with? Did you end up seeing Craner? The I didn't end up seeing Craner, but Bonner Fitness wanted me to just send an email so they can reserve it, so that's most likely what we're gonna do for the event. Um We're gonna have the Bonner and... Fitness Learning Center and then we might have employee Indy um uh, and the City League. City League is Good representation of Indiana basketball. A lot of pros um, play in that tournament and that um, that season's tournament. You know, you got a, I think it's a ten thousand dollar cash prize at the end. You're playing against it's ten actual now. good teams. That's what I, I thought, heard. I thought it was. it was three. Ours is three for the pivot league that we have that we're currently but in. City, the CBG City is currently, is but City, City League is ten. I have to look at the uh, championship check again from last season, but I believe they raised it up to ten now. And um, yeah. it's a for real competition at Bonner Fitness Learning Center. Um, it's been some good memories made out of it, good sponsorships that came to the city because of it. Hoop Bus is going to be there with it. So um, that's our most recent event that's coming up next. After that, we're going to head over to Charlotte because we're trying to play them twins. We're trying to play them next chapter, boys. We're trying to get this done. I think we're going to turn it into a three-on-three series. Um, we're going to bring our three versus their three. and um, we're going to put money up, obviously, because there ain't nobody playing for free. Uh, we're going to put our money up, and uh, we're going to see if we can take their bread. Yep, and then lastly, uh, we're looking to start a professional team here soon, so any partners that will be willing to invest to come along. Yes, if sir. you're a player, you can invest, and we can guarantee you at minimum a practice squad spot, but at maximum you'll be able to start for the roster. Um, if you're looking to take your game to the next level, to – see or test your medal against actual professional talent, D1 elite talent. Uh, you should try the TBL and this opportunity may be something for you. Um, the TBL was the second most largest um, league within North America. They've combined with the Canadian Basketball League and they've put forth the most players into the NBA G League or the NBA. So they promoted the most on any pro league you will find in North America. So basically what I'm explaining to you is that outside of the NBA and you want to stay close to home, TBL is the way to go to get to the NBA or to get to overseas. You've had guys like the Crime Stopper, Crime Stopper Akil Carr playing within the TBL who formerly played in the G League. Um, you had guys like Andre Owens who played in the NBA, start up his own team and coach uh, for the TBL. You know what I'm saying? You got the number one draft pick, Kent, Kent Benson, who started up his own team within the TBL, utilizing his connections and et cetera. So um, you got a lot of guys that are able to play at a high level within this league. So if you're interested, um, of course, you can DM me or Chico T um, so you can get more information. We can get that opportunity set up out the way. 
Last, you got any shout outs? You want to shout anybody out in particular who we working with? Man, shout out Star Kid Apparel. Shout out Grip Spritz. Shout out Craig Porter Jr. Man, shout out CBG, of course. You know what I'm saying? It's <laughs> us. Shout out Love of the G, man. Shout out the Pivot League for giving people, young people our age group, 18 to 24 to 25, you know, opportunity to get a job and to play basketball for money and have everything set up. Like they're giving us young people opportunities. Shout out Pivot League for that. Shout out the City League, of course, for bringing basketball back to Indianapolis where it's supposed to belong. Like we are a basketball state. We have a lot of colleges here, Purdue, IU. IEPY was about to turn into something else. You know, shout out, shout out into City League. That's what I got to say about that. Shout out my boy Austin who run the City League. Uh, last but not least, uh, shout out my Dukes. You know, got to shout out my Dukes. Shout, <laughs> shout out my out pops. Out my Dukes. You know what I'm saying? Shout out my dog yeah, Oreo. Sure. I might show y'all Oreo at the end. Nah, I ain't going to show them Oreo. Nah, you wildin'. Bro, nobody trying to see the dog. Nobody trying to see the dog. Shout out Dame. And then, you know what I'm saying? That's all I got to say. Yeah, uh, like I said, I shout out um the City League as well for creating the Pivot League in the first place. Um, they give opportunities to em- employ ages 18 to 24, give them career opportunities so that they can make something of their life because mm-hmm. the important thing for us with Love of the G, um, CBG, and this is for you, Foundation, we're always ways. We're looking to build a community. We're not just trying to play basketball for basketball's sake. We don't want you to leave with basketball in your mind and nothing else. You can be, be you can be more, you can become more, you can do more. Uh shout out to the City League for that. And also shout out to the City League for allowing me to pass out harm reduction um products like naloxone, um, fentanyl test strips, xylazine test strips helping but improve Marion County as a whole. Um, just, again, showing why um, you can use basketball as a tool. It's not a way out. It's a way in. <laughs> it's not a way out. It's this a guy. way in. It's not a way out. It's a way in. It's a way in. <laughs> yeah, bro. I ain't go lie to you. Uh, shout out to Stunner Boy. You know, the homie, 1BA Mike, the big shout homie. Shout out, Mike. Uh, shout out Keon. Um, you know what I'm saying? He a trainer within the Indianapolis realm. Shout out Turtle. Big Keon, um, big Turtle. D1 Factory. Shout out D1 yes, Factory. Yes, sir. Turtle. You feel shout me? Shout out Deion T. <laughs> Man, we ain't shouting out Deion. You can shout him out. I ain't shouting out Deion. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't shouting out Deion. He ain't trained me. He ain't trained me. Uh, it was on one of their. Shout out Hoop Brothers. Jordan and them. Jordan crew, Charles and them. The whole crew, you feel me? We trying to make the city blossom and bloom into what it need to be. Shout out Young Mantis. Trying to blossom and bloom. Again, like I said, basketball in the way out is a way in. Mantis King Hoop, a lick. You know what I'm saying? Especially with the way his body is contorted. You'll see it when you look him up. But he still is enthused about the game, and he's used the game to build his own platform. So you got to respect the man for grinding and still putting in more hours than your favorite hooper's favorite hooper. See what I'm saying? Literally. He locked, shout he, out he locked shout himself. Shout out Frigga for that, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got to shout out Frigga. You know what I'm saying? Gave Coming to the city. He did not have to. <laughs> but, yeah, you know, I think that's it. You feel me? So this concludes the first episode with Chico as a host of It's Only Basketball. I like to say that it was successful. We had a good conversation. You know what I'm saying? Any closing remarks? Nah, no closing remarks. Uh, be safe. Y'all be blessed. And uh, just keep hooping. I bet that. <laughs>